So a New Zealander operating for the Australians. What's going on? Steve Hansen's with us. Morning. Morning, Mike. How are you? Very well indeed. Talk me through Paris in summertime. Is it beautiful and do the Australians look fantastic? Uh, Paris is beautiful. Uh, Australian, uh, yeah, no, they're looking good actually. They're a good young team. Uh, who are working hard and uh, just like to put everybody's mind at rest that I haven't joined the Wallabies for the Rugby World Cup. I'm only here for about three or four days at the request of Eddie, a good mate of mine, and uh, just to give him some feedback on what he's doing as opposed to anything else. So good. Rugby's see, bigger than all of us, so happy to do that. Good on you. See, here, here's the thing. We've just had a massive argument in the office, mainly led by my wife, who said it's unpatriotic to go, you can go work for anybody you want, but you can't work for Australia. I said you can work for anyone you <laughs> like, you're retired. And she said you got it's, yeah. the, it's the vibe, it's Marbo. So, I mean, who cares who you work for? Yeah, well, the thing is, if you're working for someone, you're getting paid. So I'm not working for anyone. I'm just uh, here as a friend. Good on you. What, what have you observed of the Australians so far? I mean, what's their problem? I don't think they have a problem. I, you know, I've only been here less than 24 hours, so I um, don't have to answer that question. But I, personally, I don't think they've got a problem. They're just a young side that are coming together and they've got a coach that wants them to work hard and be better, and I think they're buying into that. So, um, you know, there's no secret to success. You've just got to work hard every day and and uh, ask yourself to be better, you know, along the way. And if you do that, then you, you'll find success. Well, before you arrived, what what was your? I'm, I'm sure, like all of us, you've watched them, you've watched us. What's your observation of them, of a team, and you know where they're at leading into a World Cup? Uh, well, they're rebuilding themselves, trying to re-establish themselves. Eddie seems pretty uh, hell bent on having an own his own Australian style, and uh, they're learning that. He's he's picked a young team. He's left a lot of senior players out, and and as a result, you know, they're, they're, I wouldn't call them naive, but they're young and with, as far as test experience goes, and you see that when they play the All Blacks. Like, All Blacks are great at, at staying in the fight when the pressure's on. And, mm. um, they've, you know, the All Blacks themselves have come through with some adversity in the last 12 months and it's made them stronger. And, you know, I think the Australians will have to do the same. Well, that's an interesting thing because somebody said the other day you do not win a World Cup with a lack of experience. I mean, that's true, isn't it? Pretty much. The history would tell you that. If you go through and look at all the teams that have won, there's been a large amount of test caps involved and with youth and exuberance. So I can't see that changing. What do you make of the All Blacks from what you've seen so far? And, and would you back them to beat South Africa and make it five from five going into the Cup? I think they're going great. I think, um, you know, they're exactly where they want to be. Uh, they've picked all the trophies they can and got some confidence out of that after a tough year the year before. Um, they know what they and how they want to play. They're confident in each other. Um, I don't think the game against South Africa, this uh, coming up game really means too much. It's, it's really about getting game time for certain players and coming through it without any injuries. What are your observations of Europe? Have you watched a bit of that? I mean, my, my, I, I would see Ireland and France as your two key players. Wales and England don't look up to much. Is that fair or not? Uh, well, yeah, look, I, I think a blind man can see Ireland and France are going good. Um, uh, Scotland's the other side that I think that's uh, going better than people think. Um, Wales and England are on the other side of the draw, so are Australia. So you've got the top five teams in the world currently uh, on one side of the draw. So three of them are going to be gone by the quarterfinals, mm. um, which, you know, makes it really tough. However, that's, a, that's why it's tough to win these things. But um, I, I think we're good enough to beat those, five, those other four teams ourselves. So, um, But, you know, France have just lost their 5-8, which will be a big loss. It'll be like losing Dan Carter. Yeah. Um, they'll have to find another one. And, but Ireland seemed very comfortable in their own skin. But, you know, they haven't gone past the quarterfinals, so there's pressure on them to come in as the number one team in the world and actually produce. Um, and if they do that, then they're going to be hard to beat.
Exactly. And what a turnaround, though, from last year when you look at all that Foster was going through on the side and all the problems and everyone was on their back and look at them now. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's just sort of the relationship between the All Blacks and the New Zealand public, isn't it? Yeah, look, I, I think the biggest problem wasn't the New Zealand public. I think it was the way his employers were treating him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they've, they've dealt with that, I guess, the way they think they should. But, um, you know, whether you agree with how they dealt with it is another thing. But he's come through the other side and, you know, he, he's totally focused on what he wants to do. He's got a good team around him. And, and most importantly, the players are playing for him. So... Sometimes it just takes a little while to get where you need to get to, and there's a few bumps along the way. And the you know, team coming in with a different mindset than 2019, where we were trying to win three in a row, and this group's just trying to win one, and it's really hungry to do that. And uh, 16 of them were in that changing shed that got beaten in the semi-final, and you know they'll be <coughs> they'll they'll be bringing that hurt to the surface, and you know, they're going to be a dangerous side. Good stuff. It's Steve, exciting. good on you. Always good to talk to you, mate. Listen, I appreciate it very much. No worries.